Uh, now you're a magician. So tell me, what do you think? How relevant is magic to children and the children's lives? How do you, uh, how relevant do you think it is? Magic is actually relevant for children of all ages, starting from 8 to 80 or beyond that. Yes, of course. Uh, you are out of that range or you are within that range? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, magic is actually, I mean, uh, if you ask for a definition as such, it is the precursor of science. What we know to be science today was magic yesterday. And what is, what is uh, I mean, what was magic yesterday is science today. Uh, I am talking on a microphone so that everybody can hear. This technology was not available, say, a hundred years ago. And then it was something magical at that point. But the very essence of magic is actually wishful thinking. We think of a better tomorrow, we dream of a better tomorrow, and that is how uh, we endeavor to, you know, fulfill those dreams, those wishes. And that is how magic is born. And that is how we create magic in our own lives. And so far as my life is concerned, I was born in magic, I have got magic in my blood. So uh, it's like asking a fish, how much do you love the water? I'm in it. If you have people, it encompasses everyone. It includes parents, it includes uh, students. Students would complain that they hardly have time for leisure reading it's because their school bags are full of material that they need to finish in a year. So the competition or rather the urge to read is how much can you read and mug up in one calendar year. If you can't do it in one calendar year, you have some extra classes in the year and you kind of are expected to complete that. Leisure reading has actually gone down. If we're talking about the syllabus that most schools have for English or Bengali or Hindi literature, it's mostly the classics and these are the ones which go in year after year. So what happens is that you don't have much scope to taste and uh, sample works by new authors. Yes, in uh, all languages you do have books being written for new readers. So the problem is that we don't find many takers for literature that would be attractive to children or for the younger mind. And hence we assume that since the younger people are, or the younger generations are busy with the internet, they are picking up stuff from there. I've often found myself doing the same thing, you know, I mean, that when Muskan asks me something, my daughter is 14, she'll be 15 very soon, she asks me something, and perhaps I know the answer to her questions, and I know what she's talking about, but there is something which holds me back, or probably I'm busy with something, something else is playing through my mind, I instantly tell her, why don't you Google this, you get it on the net. You know, this habit of telling your children, why don't you Google this, is actually creating a rift between you as a parent and your child. Because we are the ones who, through the entire world, proclaim, oh, we have all the time for our children. What is the time reserved for? Taking them out to shopping malls, taking them out for a movie, going out for long drives, ice creams, but never to sit down and discuss something which is a very, very important question. We feel that we have the right to acknowledge children and we always say, you know, when we were children, you were your age, we didn't have Google to help us, but then somebody did help us. In all probability, it were either our parents or our teachers at school who used to take time out. We used to technically call that extra class, but trust me, that used to work magic. Just like the same magic which is available in Kabir and the Silver Spoon in this book. It's a world of magic, it's a world of fantasy. But for our children, let it be a world of reality. Let us all at least pledge this much to our children that But But when it comes to even answering simple questions, we kind of say, why don't you Google it? Why can't you be that Google for your children?